enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. I am Pastor Bridget Ogbefo inviting you to join me every Friday at 6 a.m on the Tobago Inspirational Network for Gateway to Life, where we explore the Word of God through the help of the Spirit of God. I bring you greetings in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Gateway to Life, and I am Bridget Ogbefon, and I'm sure that God has something good in store for us today, whatever time of the day you may be watching. I know God has something beautiful arranged for you and I, and I know that it, whatever God has for us will not elude us in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful day that you have made the one that we are so glad and that we are so thankful that you have given us the privilege to be partakers of father we say accept all the praise and all the thanks in the mighty name of jesus lord as i am about to go into your word sweet holy spirit i pray that you will use my lips like the pen of a ready writer and that you will dish out your words through these lips of mine today in the mighty name name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask, O oh God, that there will be interpretation of your word. Let the letter become life to us at this moment in the mighty name of Jesus. Questions be answered, O oh God. Difficulties, O oh God, be made easy through these words that will be coming out now. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Again, this is Gateway to Life and you're welcome. So today we will be looking at what we started off some weeks back. And I trust that God is going to, you know, open our eyes to certain truths in his words. Even today in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, in a few weeks back we would have started the subject matter that I titled through the help of the Spirit of God. Understanding Divine Acceleration. And last time we would have established the fact that the only person that could make you experience divine acceleration is God himself if it doesn't come from God then it is not divine so we establish the fact that acceleration is just you know simply defined about uh, uh, defined to be uh, you know multiply speed and we said that it's only God that could grant you that kind of speed it doesn't matter what manner of grounds that you may have lost it doesn't matter the retrogression that you may have experienced in time past um, we were able to establish through the word of God that it is God alone that could make you recover all that you may have lost, all that you may have, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, missed in, in, in times past. And we looked at the Bible, the Bible scripture, which I would want to visit again, which is Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Hallelujah. We looked at divine acceleration as God's divine ability to grant you increase in speed. So I want to see, I want us to look at what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 14. We looked at it the last time. Exodus 14 and verse 13 to 15. Look at what the Bible says. It says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen, today ye shall see them no more forever look at what verse 14 says it says the Lord shall fight for you hallelujah for ye shall hold your peace verse 15 and the Lord said unto Moses wherefore criest thou unto me speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward that is what we are talking about today go forward divine acceleration receive divine ability to move forward divine ability to get multiply speed and the last time we talked about this we started by establishing that many a times divine acceleration may not come as something beautiful it may not come as something pleasant it may not come like something you know nice 
Yes, sometimes they come with pain. Sometimes when God is said to give you that divine acceleration, it may come wrap up, you know, in the wraps of pain, in the wraps of disappointment, in the wraps of, you know, or, you know, you know, p losses. But we establish the fact that underneath those ugly wraps lies divine acceleration. Because from the example of the children of God that we would have visited in Exodus chapter 14, the Bible says that the hosts of Pharaoh were behind the children of Israel and they had the Red Sea ahead of them. They were sandwiched between two evils. But the God who is able to divinely support you was there for them. And the Bible says God said to Moses, speak to the children. It he said, move forward. And we all know the rest of the story. That the sea parted Hita and Tida. And the children of Israel walked on dry land. And you know what? The host of Pharaoh that was behind them, who stubbornly pursued them, perished in that Red Sea. And that is my prayer for you today. I don't know who is watching me. I don't know wherever you may be looking for. I don't for, from. I don't know what your Red Sea experience may be right now. Today, I command in the name of Jesus that your enemies perish in that Red Sea instead of you in the mighty name of Jesus. And I declare divine acceleration that all the grounds that you may have lost in time past, I declare under the auction of the Spirit of God that you go forward and gain grounds and recover all in the mighty name of Jesus. So today, you know, we started the last time by establishing the fact that sometimes divine acceleration could come disguised you know, as a form of you losing everything you have. And we looked at the story of David, how that he lost everything, how that David, you know, is there, is everything he had was gone until he went to God and he sought from God and God told him to pursue, to recover, to overtake. We saw that established, you know, we, 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 we looked at the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 from verse 1 to 6. Today we are going further. Divine acceleration some Sometimes may come in the form of in the form of going round circles. Sometimes when God wants to give you divine acceleration, when God wants to promote you, when God wants you to be lifted from where you are to where you ought to be, sometimes at the nick, at the peak of it, it looks as if you are going around circles. It looks as if you are wasting time. I have come to tell you, dear brother and sister, do not give up. Hold on. That is the time a miracle is around the corner. When it seems as if things are stagnant, when it seems as if you are going around the corner, I have come to admonish you hold on because there is a divine acceleration in the corner you will receive it if you do not faint i don't know who i'm speaking to you have had that experience it looks as if you are marking time on the same spot come let's look at the scriptures and you will know that the god that you serve is able to make you experience a divine upliftment a divine acceleration even in the midst of that situation that looks as if you are marking time on the same spot hallelujah Let's look at what the Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 1. Hallelujah. We are talking about the fact that sometimes divine acceleration may come in the form of you marking time on the same spot. You know, going around cycles. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Joshua chapter 6. Hallelujah. And from verse 1. It says, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Look at what verse 3 says. It says, And ye shall compass, hallelujah, ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once, thus shalt thou do six days. Time will not permit me to read the, that entire chapter, but the Bible made me to understand that Jericho looked unfavorable to the children of God at that time. It looked as if nothing would come on. The Bible says that it was shut up because of the children of Israel. The Bible says none could go into Jericho, none could come out. And they 
they were in a dilemma at that time. They were stagnated at that time. They were halted at that time. They were put on hold at that time. All their dreams, visions, desires was put on hold at that time because there was a Jericho in front of them. And look at the instruction that God gave to them. God said you will end, you will compass the city. I took up my dictionary and I look up for the word compass. To compass means to go and round in a circular manner. And so they were in that place for seven days. It looked as if they were not doing anything. It looked as if they were wasting time. It looked as if they were marking time on the same spot. It looked as if that they had failed. Because God gave the instruction. He said, go around Jericho. He said, you will do it once a day. And on the seventh day, you will go around the city seven times. And you will let out a shout. At that time, it looked as if the children of Israel were going around in circles. There was divine acceleration in the making. Hallelujah. There was divine acceleration in the making. God was working out a plan for them. While it looked in the eyes of me, man, as if they were wasting time. As if they were going round in circles. Dear friends, I've come to tell you today. I don't know what that experience is that you are going through. And it looks as if you are doing the same thing over and over again. And nothing seems to be working for your good. But I've come to tell you today. There is a God who is able to bring down Jericho. There is a God who is able to bring down walls for your sake. There is a God who is able to part the sea for your sake. If only you will hold on and the Bible made me to understand the children of Israel they they, they, they obeyed God and you know the story the Bible says when they let out that child the wall of Jericho was not cracked the wall of Jericho was not just destroyed it came down it was rooted up from its root it came down flat and the acceleration that seemed that looks as if the children of God could not put their hands on they got it hallelujah because when you look at the scriptures hallelujah if you look at the scripture look read down that same chapter towards verse 46 and down you will see that the wall of Jericho came down and the children of God had access into the city so I've come to let you know today sometimes when God is preparing you to enjoy this acceleration we are talking about there may be obstacles on the way there may be delays on the way there may be things that may want to stop you from accessing your city from conquering your Jericho but I've come to tell you today hold on because God has something beautiful in line some God has something beautiful lined up for you hallelujah glory to God hallelujah God is good sometimes divine acceleration may come even in the form of total death I don't know sometimes people that you put your hope on quote and unquote when I say putting your hope on somebody people that you depend on that you look up to all of a sudden you may lose them to death and then the devil may want to come and whisper to your ears and tell you look it is over you cannot make it you cannot excel in life because look your father that you depend on he's gone look at your mother she's gone look at your brother He's gone. And then the devil may want to preach that message of defeat to you. But I've come to tell you that even around death, God could still bring out divine acceleration. Hallelujah. We all know the ultimate example, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when Jesus died, <laughs> he was in that tomb for three days. It looked as if all was gone. <laughs> it looked as if everything was over. Hallelujah. But when you look at the Bible in Matthew, Matthew 27, Matthew 27, let's look at what the scripture says in Matthew 27. Hallelujah. When Jesus died, the enemy were rejoicing. They said it was over. No more speed, no more promotion, no more elevation elevation look at what the bible says hallelujah if you look at matthew chapter 27 hallelujah matthew 27 we'll look at from verse 32 it says and as they came out they found a man of siren simon by name him they compared 
hell to bear his cross. Hallelujah. And when they were come into the place called Golgotha, that is to say a place of a skull. Hallelujah. Let me jump. Let me jump. Let me jump. It says, it says, hallelujah. Look at verse, verse 49. Hallelujah. Look at from verse 49. Hallelujah. It says, then the rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. So Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Jesus Christ died at that time. It's a long scripture. You, you, you could look at it when you have the time. But the Bible made me to understand, even though Jesus died at that time, salvation did not die. Even though Jesus died at that time, your elevation and my elevation did not die. Even though Jesus died at that time, your resurrection did not die. But the people around then saw that he died. They thought that it was over. But dear friends, the Bible made me to understand he said on the morning of the third day, the Bible made me to understand that they went to the tomb and the Savior was no longer in the tomb. He had risen because he died that you and I may live. He retrogressed that you and I may enjoy divine acceleration. So I've come to tell you today, sometimes divine acceleration may come in the form of losing a loved one. It may come in the form of death. I've always given my testimony and I I am always enthusiastic to share it every time I have the opportunity. I got into the university and I was depending on my big brother. You know, he was the one I was looking on to be able to finance me through university. But as I got my admission into the first year, my brother died. He was brutally murdered by armed robbers. And it looked to me that all hope was lost. It looked to me, where do I go from here? My parents were not financially capable. And here I was desirous to go through university. I worked so hard to get this admission. But at the point where I needed my brother most, he was taken away. Guess what? I went back to God and I said, God, you are the God of all flesh. If you brought me this far, I know you have plans for me. People of God, may I let you know, I went through university without owing a cent. I went with every bill paid. I went with every dues paid. God rested. So in that wrap of losing my brother was divine acceleration for me. So I've come to tell you today, it doesn't matter matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter who has gone out of your life. It doesn't matter who you have lost. There is an acceleration ahead of you. If only you will be sensitive enough. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but the Spirit of God is having me tell somebody. He's saying, oh, hold on. He said, look on the track. He said, look on the track. He said, because you will get a leading. If you take your eyes off the track, you will miss that leading. He said, he's sending some someone your way that will lead you to your place of plenty. He said he will lead you to your place of enjoying that divine elevation. He said, but put your eyes on the track. Sikata. Put your eyes on the track so you don't miss that leading. Hallelujah. God is able to make you enjoy divine acceleration hallelujah i don't know what you may have lost some of you may have been married and you are trusting god you are looking unto him for that fruit of the woman it seems not to be coming and you are counting years oh i'm getting older the lord is having me tell you today he said he will give you divine acceleration you will gain the years that you have lost that with the caterpillar and the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten god said he will give you a recovery of them all if only you will hold on i don't know if you lost your job right now you are looking at your counting months every time the month comes you don't know where your bills coming from but i've come to tell you today that god that accelerates that god that can give you divine elevation he's on your side if only you will look up to him hallelujah Mato Roboshete. So when you look at the book of Luke chapter 24 from verse 1 to 6, when you have the time, it tells us that the same Jesus whom we saw died. The same Jesus whom Matthew chapter 27 recorded that he died. Everybody saw him that he died. The same Jesus arose. <laughs> the same Jesus arose. And the power of 
uh, divine acceleration came into full manifestation. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us to know Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. It says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame. Jesus went through all of that so that you and I will not be stagnant. So that you and I can have the speed that we require to gain grounds in life. Hallelujah. Jesus triumphed already. He triumphed. He, 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 dis, he disgraced principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness. Just for you and I not to remain in the same spot that we, 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 we are in. Hallelujah. And so friends, today I want to let you know that God is willing to take your hand and have this walk of life with you. But the question I keep asking, that I love to ask, are you willing to put your hands in his hands? Are you willing to put your hands in his hands? Are you willing to hold the hand of God as he directs you through the paths of life? And so you want to ask me, what do I do when experiencing this disguised divine acceleration? What do I do when things unpleasant seem to be happening around me? How do I hold on? How do I put my hands in God's hand to take me through unpleasant situation on my way to being elevated, on my way to experiencing divine acceleration? You want to ask me, say, sister, what do I do? How do I go through the tough times? Number one, you have to go back to God and inquire at all times when things seem to be difficult, when you don't understand things things happening around you the best place to go to is not Google it's not the internet it's not friends it's not social media the first place to go to is God like David did the Bible says David ran back to God and he inquired of God he said God look I've lost everything he said what do I do do I run after this troop do I run after them and God gave him the release he said yes go pursue catch up with them and overtake them. So when things seem to be going out of hand, the first place to go to is God. Go back to God. It's all right to ask God questions. It's all right to tell God, why is this happening? It's all right to say, God, I feel like I'm sinking. It's all right to say, God, I feel like I can't take this anymore. It's all right to say, God, I feel like this is too heavy for me to bear. What exactly is going on? It's all right to speak with God. After all, the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, it says, come now, let us reason together. God himself, he said, come, let us brainstorm. Let us reason our things. It is almost impossible for you to brainstorm without asking questions. So it's all right for you to ask God healthy questions sometimes and say, God, why is this? And let me tell you, God will give you the answers at the point when he knows that you will be able to understand the answers. Hallelujah. Because sometimes you find that when things are going up, down, sideways, out of line in your life, those are the times when it seems like God is silent. No matter how much you pray, but God has a way of reserving the answers until when he knows that you are able to grasp the meat of the message. Hallelujah. And so people of God, I want to speak to you today. Are you listening to the sound of my voice? And you do not have a relationship with Jesus himself. Without Jesus, you cannot make it in life. Without Jesus, you cannot have this divine acceleration we are talking about. Without Jesus, you would not be able to excel in the areas of life that you ought to. Without Jesus, you will indeed mark time in vain. Without Jesus, you will indeed go in circles in vain. Without Jesus, you will indeed lose everything in vain. Jesus is the answer. Do you have Jesus in your life? Are you listening to the sound of my voice and you don't know Jesus? I want to let you know today. Come to Jesus today. Receive him as your Lord and personal Savior. So you are watching me. You want to lift up your hands. If you have not given your life to Jesus, you want to say, Jesus, I'm ready for you. You want to say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I believe that you died 
and you rose again. And so I confess you with my mouth today. Dear Lord Jesus, accept me as your child. Come into my life and be my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Hallelujah. If you just said that prayer, I want you to be rejoicing because the whole of heaven is. I want you to know that Jesus Christ, in, that is all it takes. The Bible says that when you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, it says, thou shalt be seen. It's as simple as that. If you have confessed with your mouth, I want you to know that Jesus Christ has come to dwell in your heart. And in the subsequent um, episodes, we'll be talking about what you further need to do, you know, to strengthen that relationship with God, even when where this particular subject matter, matter is concerned. And until I come back next time, I want you to be confident that God is on your side. No evil can befall you. No wickedness can take hold of you and your household because God is on your side. And until I come back next time, I want you to go rejoicing because the Lord has already given you the victory. Shalom. Enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it i am pastor bridget obeifo inviting you to join me every friday at 6 a.m on the tobago inspirational network for gateway to life where we explore the word of god through the help of the spirit of god